This presentation is about design challenges in DDR4, in particular the DDR Bus Simulator, which is a new Keysight ESOF EDA simulation tool for DDR4 and beyond. In previous generations like DDR, DDR2 and DDR3, the methodology was to collect a waveform of a few thousand bits and measure the setup and hold time. And this methodology carries forward to DDR4, but it's no longer enough. The reason, of course, is that unit interval is dropping. The data rates are going up, and the unit interval is one quarter in DDR4 for what it was in prior generations. And this means that ISI causes a blurring of the eye diagram, and you no longer get these very steep walls on the, the bathtub curves that I'll show in the next slide. At low speeds, it wasn't necessary to introduce the BR bathtub as part of the specification, and the reason is that the bathtub curve uh, is very, very steep, and so you can get nearly zero errors with just a small amount of uh, safety margin. Now, this bathtub curve you can see is generated by uh, a, the blue part of the curve um, uh, is generated directly from a simulation of about 10 to the 5 bits. The grey part is generated after the dual Dirac uh, approximation. But we can see, even though this is an approximation extremely steep, and any error in the approximation uh, can be taken out by a small safety margin because the curve is so steep. At DDR4 speeds, you no longer have the luxury of assuming that the bathtub cur curve is uh, kind of a brick wall, infinitely steep. So the question is, how does it roll off? Now you can measure a, uh, say, 10 to the minus 5 simulation, this blue part here, and then attempt to extrapolate using this gray curve here, which is the dual Dirac extrapolation. But we're extrapolating over 11 orders of magnitude. And the dual Dirac approximation has several assumptions in it. So ideally, we'd like to get to this 10 to the minus 16 uh, spec, which is the green lines here, the optimum opening. But because of uncertainty in the dual Dirac approximation, we have to pad the design out and uh, add excessive margin, which is this kind of yellow uh, opening here. So clearly this is very expensive in terms of the design. Um, we have to uh, over-design the system if we're using this approximation because we're uncertain as to what the exact shape of the bathtub curve is. We have a detailed white paper on the dual Dirac model. I don't want to cover this in detail today. I just wanted to point out that the dual Dirac approximation is just that. There are several assumptions in the in the uh, extrapolation, the approximation, and these assumptions frequently don't hold in real-world channels that have roll-off and so on. So we got to thinking, is there a way of generating this BR bathtub curve that is both, both fast and accurate? Obviously, we can't run uh, 10 to the 16 bits through the system. The dual Dirac approximation has its limitations. Is there a better way? And it turns out there is. Instead of using the dual Dirac approximation with all its assumptions, DDR bus simulator instead uses statistical I, a technique we've adapted from uh, methods used in CERDES for a number of years. The idea is we take an impulse response uh, using a very short traditional SPICE simulation, using our transient simulator, on the transmitter, the channel, and the receiver. Instead of running a bit pattern through this impulse response, we instead apply the stochastic properties of a conceptually infinite non-repeating bit pattern. We don't need to use the bit pattern itself. We don't need to run 10 to the 16 bits with this simulation. We can just calculate the eye diagram using statistical techniques that we've adapted from CERDES. Now you're probably familiar with our channel simulator that we use for CERDES. It turns out there are some subtle differences between CERDES and uh, DDR buses. So we created a new simulator called the DDR bus simulator. And this is its palette and uh, the typical application. We have a controller on the left hand side, its package, a board and a DRAM. And we're measuring an entire byte lane here, the eight um, DQs and the DQS, which is obviously differential. The transmitter and receiver can use either built-in models that have some signal processing like pre-emphasis and uh, continuous time linear equalization, or you can use a netless model, or you can use an IBIS model. So running this simulation in just seconds, you get a wealth of information about this byte lane. Here we have the density plots for each of the DQs, 
the uh, BR contour down to an arbitrary low uh, BR rate. In this uh, case, the red line is uh, 10 to the minus 16. The uh, shape of the BR, the BR curve versus the mask. We have many uh, timing margin measurements as well as the uh, DQS uh, performance. DDR bus simulator is ideal for exploring the design space because each point in the design space only takes a few seconds to simulate. So we support sweeps across design variables, across data files that you might have from various uh, touchstone files for connectors, for example, across corner cases. In addition, we also generate a spreadsheet summary if you want to use that for design of experiments. So if you're interested in exploring this unique technology, the next step will be to download the evaluation license and get in the queue for the uh, release in November from this uh, website. Also, it, this technology is available in beta now if you want to uh, sign up for the beta program if you can't wait till uh, the release in November. I hope you'll uh, download the beta and give us some uh, feedback. Thanks very much for your attention.